Well, hello buddies, friends, artists, people who watch my ridiculous videos on lots of different subjects. Well, I'm working right now, and the reason I haven't posted for a while, is uh, pushing the envelope on some of my uh, paintings um, that I put up in the local art gallery here in San Clemente. Uh, pretty much everything that everybody puts in are landscapes, that kind of thing. Some really nice work, but uh, it's all in square rectangular frames, and uh, I've been pushing that envelope uh, with uh, some of the stuff I started with. I really like the floating frame, so pretty much everything I do is going to be on a floating frame. Uh, the two pieces I have hanging right now will be taken down uh, this weekend, and new ones will be put up. And here's one of the new ones that I'm going to enter uh, in the next uh, gallery show. This one is of an EC-121 uh, Super Constellation. I was in the Air Force for a number of years. Worked on these things. This is the precursor for what they call AWACS, if you know what that is. So it's got a big radome on the top and one on the bottom. And I wanted to push that um, not rectangular or square envelope with this one. So I used uh, the same kind of framing that I've used before. It's all straight. There's 13 angles on this thing. It got pretty complicated to put it together, and I th was saying at the time, I really want curves instead of straight lines. Um, so that's what I've been working on, is uh, how to get um, some of my stuff inside of a curved floating frame. And that's what I'm working on right now, uh, to have a second piece to go into the uh, turnover at the art gallery this weekend. So instead of having these uh, straight straight lines you know, like this, very complicated angles, which is cool, but um, I really wanted some smooth curves. So here's the project I'm working on right now. Give you a little update if for anyone who actually cares. Um, I'm doing a, a painting using acrylics, which has been a real learning experience too. If you, if you do anything with acrylics, you know this stuff dries really, really fast, which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing, because if you want to cover large areas, you need a lot of paint, and the stuff dries out before you can get a large area covered, so you end up with this problem of mixing a second batch of color to, to match the first one. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent again. Um, the thing I want to show you is how I figured out to at least initially do curved frames. Um, it's not the end point because I'm going to go further with this. Normally to make uh, lots of really interesting curves you'd have to do lamination types. You know, a bunch of thin strips of wood uh, glued up against the form so you can get uh, really complicated curves. I couldn't quite get there with this because I don't have any way to do a lot of lamination yet. I'll be working on that shortly. So here's the, what I call the painting frame right here. I'm working on it. It's about half done. Uh, so you can't really tell what it is, which is okay because I'll show you after I'm all finished uh, what it is. So I decided I wanted this, this um, structure right here to go with the painting that I'm doing. This is actually water, big wave coming up over my nephew's son's surfing photo. Yeah, see, give you a little bit of hint where this is going. So I wanted this to ha have kind of a showing of this curvature of this wave coming over. So I, I decided on what the, what the painting was going to look like, and I cut these, this piece of uh, plywood out and started putting this thing on, uh, on the plywood using... Uh, acrylics. It's been a handful learning how to do this. Um, entertaining. But now I needed the float frame. This is the picture frame or the painting frame, but I needed a float frame to follow this curve. And here's what I did. I'll show you. You might want to try this. It's actually it's pretty simple depending on how tight you make the curves. So I'm going to stop here for just a second and get the uh, get the float frame down so I can show you how, how I did this. All right, here is the float frame. And you can see it follows the same uh, outline as the uh, painting frame, right, like that. And you might say to yourself, well, gee, how did he do that? Um, 
it's pretty simple if you do any kind of woodworking. I actually used a tracing method uh, with a router. Um, you put a special kind of a sleeve on the router that holds the bit out away from, in this case, the picture frame, the painting frame, and I set it up so that I had about a quarter of an inch uh, out away, right? So I just ran the router over this painting frame and it cut that piece of plywood out uh, about a quarter inch um, wider all the way around. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Everybody's done that if you've done any kind of woodworking. Uh, and if you haven't, well, it's pretty common to do. The hard part was figuring out how in the world I was going to fasten what normally is this. Let me get a piece here. This is how I normally build the straight frames. This is two pieces, right, joined together to make effectively this outer thing. Now, at first I said, well, maybe I could use something like because I didn't have any way to laminate things up. I said, maybe I could use something like this. It's vinyl, big strip of vinyl. That will make the bend, right? But how in the world do I fasten it to the side of the, um, the plywood here? I'd have to put nails or something in, and vinyl is pretty soft stuff, and it'd be really difficult to fill in the holes. I can do that on the wood, no problem because I can use plastic wood and I can paint over it. Well, I didn't want to paint anything. I didn't want any nail holes in the side of this. So it meant that I had to go to some kind of flexible stuff that had this profile, right? And what I found was this. I'm not sure what this is for. It's like an angle piece for the wall or a corner or something. I'm not sure what you do with this, but I bought this because, okay, it's made out of the same stuff, vinyl, but now I've got the same problem. How in the world do you flex this? All right. Anybody know? Of course, some of you do. You're saying, well, uh, hey, any idiot knows how to do that. Well, I'm pretty much in the idiot category, uh, and I wasn't sure, but here's how I ended up doing it is I cut the, the pieces with a, a, a cutout here. See that? And that allows you to bend this. There's a limitation on how hard you can bend it, but it's allowed me to bend this around the piece of plywood that now has the quarter inch um, um, extension all the way around. And then I used a, a nail gun to nail these things on and believe me it took a lot of effort to be able to make these bend around here um, you have to find something that you can push against because you really have to put some effort into this now the the big curve right here not a problem but like this one much tighter and were I to do it again I actually would have used a smaller cutout. I just used a router here to cut these out. I just pushed them up against the fence and the bit. I used a pretty large bit, but I would have made the cut smaller so that these pieces were a bit wider. And it still would have been okay if I'd have made these cuts a little bit smaller and I probably would have got a better flex. Um, anyway, that's how I did it without having a lamination. Uh, methodology. I just use this vinyl. Now uh, here was the big problem is that there was no way it was going to make this this turn at all. And so I still ended up using straight pieces. I'll, I'll get around this next time by actually making a lamination that each individual piece can make a very tight turn and collectively once they're glued together I should be able to get a complete curve like this one up here, right, without having to, to go like I did and without having to use these straight pieces on the end. So that's how I did it. If you're interested in making a floating frame that has um, some curves, 
and you don't have this shop or anything else to be able to do um, lamination or steam bending which is even more difficult because it requires a lot more tools I'm not against that mm. but that's one of the tools I don't have yet so I have to work on that later on so once I get this done completed painted then I can lay this in like I've done with all the other ones leaving a quarter inch gap all the way around that's the plan and then this will go in the next uh, art show once I'm completed but doing the paintings is just amazingly time-consuming tedious um, I gotta figure out a better way to do that too but anyway that's my latest project that's why I haven't had anything up for a while um, eventually you'll get to see the finished product I'm hoping that I can get uh, at least a, a third second or whoa even a first place in the next um, gallery show because I'm pushing these people to, to accept stuff that's a little odd for such a conservative place anyway talk to you later have a good time do something new try something you don't know how to do mess it up that's how you learn at least that's how i learned